Okay, so I just wanted to address this little thing about Java programming. I really like using Java. It's uh, easy to work with, fast language. Here, you see here on my screen, I have a little program wrote up. Nothing too fancy, just a little hello world. Uh, if we come over to PowerShell and run that real quick. Um, let's see, I think I was in the delete folder. Document slash delete. Um, LS. Oh, well, as you can tell, I've been working on Linux lately, uh, on a Windows system, as for the directory, but both of them work. That's why I opened PowerShell instead of command prompt. So there's that. So we can go ahead and compile it. Run the compiler with a say hi dot Java. Just take a second here. There it is. And we should be able to run it. So I'm going to grab the current location. Is it location? And start the JVM with the class path of the current location. And run say hi. Get our little prompt there. I'll just escape out of the prompt and get a hello world. Or if I hit up and run that again, uh, I can enter my name and get the custom message. So just a basic Java program. And for those of us that are used to working with computers a lot, running it here, compiling it and running it in a prompt is man prompt or bash or zish or uh, traditional command prompt or PowerShell. That's no problem because we're used to working with computers and see those all the time. But for the average user, that seems a little out of date. And sometimes even myself, I would like to just have some buttons to sit back and click on. Uh, and while I hold a cup of coffee in my other hand, instead of keeping both hands on the keyboard occasionally. But this is where we usually start out when we're learning Java programming. That's what I wanted to address. So there's all of this stuff, the system.in, the default system input, which is the keyboard, and the default system.out, which is the screen. Those work fine, and running the command prompt is no problem, but it seems a little out of date, I guess is the thing I was getting at. And in, the, in our modern world, it seems like so many people are used to starting out with GUIs, right? For all the people that learned to program in Visual Studio, learning Visual Basic had no trouble learning it starting out on GUIs. So I wanted to address doing that in Java, uh, uh, a much better language than Visual Basic to work with. So that's what this video is going to go over, just um, setting up. I'm going to use NetBeans and go ahead and set it up to work with NetBeans and JavaFX and start with GUIs right from the beginning in Java. So we'll need to download a couple pieces of software to get that going. So let's jump over here and get the downloads going. So I went ahead and did a couple searches here. Um, I went with JDK 11. Uh, as of the time I'm recording this video, I believe we're at JDK 16 now, but I don't, over the years, I've learned that I don't like being a beta tester for the programming language itself. So I usually roll the back, that back a couple issues. And this is the setup I've tested on a Chromebook, um, obviously with the Crostini desktop activated. Uh, if you're not familiar with that on any Chromebook anymore, you can go to settings and there's a switch that says Linux beta. And that gives you a little um, Debian or Ubuntu desktop virtual machine, so you don't have to go messing around with the operating system if you want to do more in a Chromebook. But with that, uh, the default desk, Linux desktop on a Chromebook and Mac OS, this, is, this setup did work. So download JDK 11, I'm just going to go to the official one, which is a couple steps back, but any JDK after 11 should work with this and just find your normal one. And if I'm setting it up on the Windows machine now, but like I said, I already trusted this setup on a Chromebook and a Mac OS. So this is going to work on any of our systems. And if you don't have an Oracle account yet, you'll need to set one up. Uh, you can do all the downloading with the video paused in a moment. And also search for JavaFX SDK. So a couple years ago, 
uh, JavaFX was part of the Java development kit uh, up until eight or nine, I believe. And then they removed it. And a lot of people thought that seemed weird because Swing technically wasn't deprecated, but it's no longer supported. And removing JavaFX kind of left the language without a um, without a platform to, to build GUIs with, uh, graphical user interfaces with. And the reason they did that, though, is because JavaFX is available two ways. We can either use it as a Java object, kind of the normal public class, build up Java objects and draw our JavaFX that way, or it's available as a markup language and called FXML. And if we use it as FXML, then we, it's just a markup language. We can use other programming languages with it. Uh, so that's why it kind of pulled away from the Java thing. That way people can use JavaFX, even if they're using a different language. We're not going to cover that today, but it is possible using that as a markup language. So the subsidiary of Oracle that took over it is this company Gluon. So we'll just look for look for glue on, uh, and 11.1 11 is the one I tested. So the window Java FX Windows SDK, or whichever system you're on, just download the Java FX SDK. Just hit download for that, and then I've been using NetBeans. Uh, it works the same on every system. That's why I like going with NetBeans as opposed to some of the others. There's subtle differences when we run some of them on different systems. Uh, NetBeans is the same whether we run it on a Chromebook, a Windows machine, or a Mac OS. It's going to behave. NetBeans will behave the same. Uh, things made by Apache are nice like that. And just download the lo latest long-term support. So uh, I'm going to go with 12. Again, that's the one I already tested. And one more sort of thing, uh, I mentioned that it's available as a Java class. JavaFX is available as a Java class or as a markup language. And either way, drag and drop GUIs with a drag and drop interface where I can move buttons and stuff around with the mouse is a whole lot easier to work with. So the official one for doing that is this thing called Scene Builder. So download scene builder. And again, that is put together by the company Gluon. So we'll need those four. And that way we have this interface and we can just drag our buttons around and all our controls and menus and components and fill out a little form. And it's a whole lot easier than typing either a markup language or a Java class to get that part going. And then all we have to do is the Java in the background. Sort of like that one I mentioned a moment ago where Visual Studio using the Visual Basic language. That's the most common way people start into programming anymore where they're dragging the mouse around to put the inner graphical user interface together and then just write the code in the background to run that. So I'm going to do that setup for Java. So we'll need Scene Builder and NetBeans, uh, the JavaFX SDK, which again was pulled out of the normal Java JDK um, because it can work with other programming languages. But we're just going to do it with Java. So uh, the Java FX SDK and the latest, uh, um, well, not the latest Java. I went with the 11.0.11 uh, Java is the one I did all my testing with. So let's get those downloaded and then we'll run the installers and then we'll be back to the next scene because yeah, just download those and run the installers for your system. All right, so with the while the video was paused between scenes, I went ahead and ran these three installers for NetBeans, Scene Builder, and the JDK. And if you downloaded those, um, you might have noticed the the open JFX blah 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 SDK is just a folder. So there's not really an install on that. We just have to copy and paste that where we want it. So 
So here in my Windows machine, I'm going to extract that. I'm sure that'll work. Okay, it shouldn't take too long. Okay, there it goes. And then I'm just going to take the folder that was in there and move that somewhere else. So copy that. I'll go over to program files where things normally are. And here where Java is installed. And I'm just going to hit Control V to paste that in here. Yes, continue. And you just want to take note of where you where you put that. So the JavaFX SDK will just want to take note of that. So now everything's installed here. Uh, I can go ahead and close out of this, close out of this, so I'll close all these, and close that. And really, we're finished with Adam now too. So I'll go ahead and close that. Well. I have the storyboard for the scenes in this video, notes and things like that. So I'll keep Adam open, but we're done with that for now. And we can go ahead and set up NetBeans and Scene Builder. Um, and our configurations for doing this go by project. So basically now we're ready to just walk through the steps of setting up a project in NetBeans to work with Scene Builder. And this is the first run, so I'm going to pause the video while it does it because there's going to be a lot of updates and things. So back in just a second after all those updates run. Okay, so NetBeans opened up and ran a couple updates on itself, and we're ready to get started. There's some global settings uh, we'll set for the IDE, but until we have a project open, we don't see all the buttons. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new project first. And we have an option of how our project's going to be built, either Maven, Gradle, or Ant. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, that's all the background task. It'll how it sets up the folders, the directory structure for where we keep our source files and our class path, our class files, and all that, and the build files. Uh, so the big difference is Maven is centralized. Gradle is spread out, and Ant is kind of the middle ground. Um, a rough way to think of it is you think of Maven in the would have one build file with a thousand lines in it. Whereas Gradle would have a thousand build files with one line each. Um, so obviously, if you know this is going on a system with um, the old style disk drives, one build retrieving one build file can be a lot faster if you're on ssd lots of build files will probably be faster i usually go with the middle ground and just go with an ant project myself so i'm just going to create a java with ant project and notice we do have a java fx option uh, i'm just going to go with a regular project and set everything up myself so a java with ant project a new application and give it some sort of name I'll just call it Java FX prototype. And the reason I want to make it a prototype, oh yeah, and if it's the first project you've created, you might have to download a couple dependencies. And I'm going to call it prototype so that these will be set with this project and then future I'll just make a copy of that one instead of setting these up every time. So we need to go ahead and set up a couple things. First off in the IDE, some global settings. So if we come over to Tools and Libraries, we need to include those JavaFX libraries we downloaded. So Tools, Libraries, and then we need a new library. Uh, I'll just call it JavaFX. That'll make it easy to find. And for the class path on it, we need to add some jar files. And that's those files we downloaded. So go to where you stored that folder. I just put mine over in the program files. Um, there it is, JavaFX SDK 11.02. And I think in library, it might be in bin. Ah, uh, yes, in the library, we have a whole bunch of JavaFX dot something jar files. So just select all of those. 
and add those for this library. And while we're doing global settings, we probably want to be able to double click over here on a uh, FXML file and have it open with the proper software for it instead of doing the markup language in the text editor here. So if we go to tools and options, we can set that up here under the Java tab. And then there's a sub tab Java FX. And whenever this activates, there's an option where we can redirect it to scene builder. I'll pause the video, pause the recording while this, oh, there it goes. Don't need to pause. So it's asking where, so where is scene builder at? Uh, so that says, that's the default one. It looks like we sh it should be good. I'm going to browse for it anyway, just to be sure. I'm not sure if that's where I put it at. Well, I'll try to go with that. Uh, if that's not the one it is, to save time in the video, um, just come to this spot and navigate to the proper one. But it looks like it found it already when I installed it. I must have installed Scene Builder before I installed NetBeans. So now we can do some project settings for this. And so if we come over here and right click on it and come to properties, we'll have the settings for this particular project, which I call prototype so that for future projects, I'll just make a copy of that one as a starting point. And there's just a couple changes we need to make here, uh, in particular with the libraries. And for some reason, I guess it's internal to NetBeans, we can't use the default JDK. So just select a non-default one, JDK. So I have JDK 11 as a default and a non-default. If you're only seeing the default one, just hit Manage Platforms and click on Manage Platforms, add a platform, and then navigate to where it's at. Um, I was already looking at it, but it should be under on the C drive or wherever you have it set up on a Windows machine. It's on the C drive and the Java folder and then JDK 11 and hit next, give it a name and then hit finish. I already have it in mind, so I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel. But in, we need to make sure there's at least the default and one non-default one is we need to use the non-default one. And then also on, under library still down here, we need to add the class path. So hit the little plus sign and add a library. And if you haven't already guessed, the library we want is that one we just created, that Java FX library. So we'll create that. Um, under build, the compiling option or build, go ahead and uncheck compile and save. That'll, um, um, that'll be useful to uncheck that and wait till you hit the run button to compile it. It won't slow down. It won't slow things down on you. Uh, so really we just need to add the libraries and it's a good idea to delay compiling to we're ready to run it. Then under run, um, there's still one more thing to change, but I want to see the error message before we, before we go fix that. So let's go set up our classes. So to do this, we'll need two, two Java classes. Uh, it's a Java thing, so obviously we're going to need a main class. And we'll need a controller to connect to our FXML file. So under Java class, another new one, I'm just going to call it control. 
and our main will be a, a regular JavaFX application main. So that means it needs to extend the application class, which we'll need to import. Uh, so if we click over here on the little light bulb, add import for JavaFX application should be there if those libraries got set up correctly. And now we'll see, once again, we need to implement some abstract methods because the application has that start method. Uh, start brings in a stage, and I'm just going to rename that with Hungarian notation because I kind of prefer that. Uh, I'm going to take that exception handling out of there because we'll deal with that in a moment. And just to make the code look nice, I'm going to Go ahead and label this closing curly brace so I don't lose track of the closing curly braces. And the only thing left to do here right now, we'll be back to fill in the start method. And in a moment, is we do need our Java main method. So public static void main. These always look the same in Java. Uh, there might be an array of strings coming from the system when it starts. And for a JavaFX application, our main method always just says application.launch. And then we'll pass in, pass those args coming from the system. That's the start for our main method. Uh, we'll do some more stuff in a moment. We'll come back and do the start method in a moment after we get our control and our JavaFX thing set up. And for the control class, there's an interface. Uh, we have some interfacing requirements to work with JavaFX in uh, the markup language form. So we need to implement implements initial initializable. Uh, so we need to implement the initializable interface, which again, we'll have to import the javafx.fxml.initializable. And now we need to implement abstract methods, which is just this uh, public void initialize, which takes in a uniform resource locator and a resource bundle. But I, and by Default and that means it goes ahead and does some error handling. Um, I rarely use this, just need an error. I'll put that there and then all our actual JavaFX stuff we'll put above it and then we'll connect to an FXML file. Go ahead and save that. But there is still one more thing in the setup we need to address. I just wanted to see the error for it first before we go and fix the error. So just hitting run and selecting, telling the IDE where the main class is located at. It's, it's going to try to run, but there's a slight issue with the class path. There we go. Oh, there we go. We'll see this error. JavaFX runtime components are missing, which is, um, it's always a little unnerving to see error messages, but that one was expected here because JavaFX is not in our SDK, so it's not included in the normal class path when we compile things. So if we come back in properties, we can just add it there at runtime. So come back over and set project properties. And again, said all of these are project properties. So any future projects can just be started as copies of these, copies of this one. So we don't have to do this every time. And in properties under run here in VM options, we need to add some modules to the class path. So two dashes and then module dash path. And we need the directory 
of where JavaFX is installed. The library that we imported as a NetBeans library, but it's not an SDK library. So if we come over here to grab the address, I put it in program files, but wherever you put it on your computer, just navigate to that. Um, JavaFX SDK. And in the library, I'm just going to copy um, and paste that in. I'm going to retype that because I'm worried it might give me a little bit of an issue with that being on a Windows system. So I'm going to turn it to the normal string way of typing this. I'm just going to switch it to back to forward slashes instead of backslashes and put it in quote marks because there's a space in there. So program files Java FX dash SDK SDK dash 11.0.2 slash. So I'm going to put all that in quote marks because I don't know if the copy and paste one will work there. Because it gave it copied and pasted in the Windows format, and NetBeans is an Apache product, so uh, they probably just the normal modifications for a class path. That's the way we normally type them anyway. Windows accepts both ways. Uh, they had to just give us that when we copy and paste them. So we need that. So our modules are also looking at that SDK whenever we compile something, and. We also want to look there and add modules. So dash dash add dash modules space. And then there's two that we want to add. JavaFX.controls a comma and no space. Um, a space will mess it up here. Remember our, our command is space delimited. This is a command prompt instruction. So things are space delimited, so no space between the comment here. And we also need javafx.fxml. And that's two of those li jar file libraries where we brought in. Uh, we just need them for the compiler as well. So module, dash dash module path, then the directory of the library in that Java FX SDK, then dash dash add modules, Java FX dot controls, and Java FX dot FXML. So we hit OK and rerun this. It should run without that error message. Well, I was expecting no error message there. Uh, let me see if I can track that down. Um, JavaFX.base, JavaFX.controls. It's right there. Did I spell it wrong? Um, maybe I spelled it wrong over here. So back in properties for the project under run. Oh, maybe it didn't like that. Um, that thing's still on my clipboard. Yep, it sure is. So let me try just sending a Windows style directory in there. See if it likes that a little bit better. It didn't crash immediately. That's something. Oh, okay. It's running. Um, it doesn't do anything yet. So, yes, um, I guess Apache takes that into consideration these days. They make really good products. So, they took into consideration that if we copy and pasted a Windows command prompt or a Windows address, it would have the backslashes, not the forward slashes. So, just copy and paste that, and then it'll find those libraries. And it doesn't do anything yet. So, we can just stop the run and now we needed to actually do some stuff. 
So we still need that fxml file in order to uh, build the graphical user interface for this thing so that we can do stuff with it. And we could just hit new here and do that. I'm going to do the new one from scene builder uh, since this is the prototype that I'm going to make copies of. Again, now that the project settings are set up in the prototype and NetBeans is set up, uh, those couple general settings are in NetBeans. And we should be able to just make a copy of this and have all those settings so we don't have to set it up again. Do just have to do the setup once though. So the reason I wanted to start from over here is this right here. Uh, there's some templates we can start from here. If we just did a blank FXML file in, in NetBeans, it would be a blank file, an empty one. And I know I'm at least going to want the menu bar at the top and the status bar at the bottom. So I'm going to go with this complex application. No, I'll go with a basic application. You can change it later. That way there's a menu bar and a couple other things. Uh, cancel out of that. And that way we start with this basic GUI. And now I'm going to, going to save this in that NetBean project. So in documents, there should be a NetBeans projects folder. Yep, there's the prototype and the source files. And I just put all this in the default package. So I'm going to call this, um, I'm going to call it main.fxml. So we have that. And if we come back over to NetBeans, see that is now available there. And I'm going to close that. I just wanted to create it with that template. It makes it a little easier. And if we double click on this to open, it should open with Scene Builder now, not with NetBeans. Hopefully, it's... oh, there it goes. Yep, so open with Scene Builder, so the connections are all there. And if you want it in text form, uh, you can just right click on it and hit edit to get it right here in NetBeans. You can see it's a uh, a modified XML thing, a whole bunch of comments, and then we have our, uh, well, that top level menu as a markup language. So markup languages are very nice for computers because we have every piece of data says, includes where it starts, what's involved in that data, and where it ends. So that's what's really fast to go through the CPU and uh, yeah, we could have typed all this stuff, but using that template makes it a little bit quicker there. So now we just need to connect our control object to that file and then send our control object over to the main to load onto our stage that we load when we launch the application. Uh, just a couple more steps here and they're fairly straightforward. So to make that connect, I guess we'll start with making that connection. So to make that connection, we'll do it over in Scene Builder. But under Control, on the Control class, as long as we met our interfacing requirements, which we, means we implemented this initializable interface and overrode that abstract method that it wanted to, us to, go ahead and label that to keep the code nice and clean uh, mark these closing curly braces but as long as we've met those interfacing requirements we should be able to connect to it from scene builder so we come over to scene builder down here at the bottom this tab on the left at the bottom is controller and as long as this main.fxml is in the same package which that means it's in the same folder as the other, as those Java classes. This option here for controller class should have a drop down menu. And then we can check our control class. It has to be something that implements initializable. 
So we hit that. And if it's not on the list, uh, you'll need to refresh Scene Builder. Um, I'm not the only person that has put that on their page asking for a refresh button uh, on upcoming versions. So hopefully soon there'll be a refresh button. But if it's not there, just uh, kind of close this. Maybe do a random change. Right? Add like the letter A and take it away and save it. Reopen Scene Builder. Uh, and force a refresh and um, maybe go to their page and be one more person adding that a refresh button would be really, really nice on Scene Builder. But that'll make, that'll form the connection. So now we have our control class connected to the FXML uh, markup file holding the information about our GUI. We just need to load that into our into our main and put it on the stage. And yeah, I know this seems like a lot of steps, but we only have to set it up once because like I said, um, I pointed out that I called mine prototype so that I can just copy and paste this project because they're all project settings and then just a couple things for the IDE. And when I'm doing this, the main class is always exactly the same. So after the setup, I never really touch the main or this FXML file. The only one that gets opened is the control and then any custom classes that we need. So the setup's almost finished. We just need to load this in. And to do that, we'll need a parent object. I usually just call it root. And what that's going to be is an FXML loader. And that has a method called load in it. And we're going to load git class dot git resource. Because remember, we, um, in our interfacing requirements, we agreed that we're going to bring in a resource bundle. So we have a resource. And that resource we want, whoops, wrong button, wrong parenthesis. Need something in parentheses here. We have to say what, what resource we want which is that main.fxml file. And then the semicolon at the end. So a parent object to hold the fxml loader. And that we're going to fill up with dot load. And we're going to get a class that happens to be a URL resource, which we agreed to bring in when we implemented that interface. And we have our resources, that main.fxml file. Oh, then we need to click over here and get these imports. Import Java FX FXML and import Java FX scene parent. And now we have our object, so we'll just put that into a scene. Uh, scene, give it a name. I'll call it SCN main because I like Hungarian notation for anything that shows. And then camel case for the things in the background and that is going to be a new scene and we're just going to load in the root once again a couple imports we're just going to click this make sure it's the java fx one and now that we have a scene we can load that scene on a stage and this is the terminology i like about java fx is it makes sense in my mind maybe from back in drama club in high school or something but we build up a scene, put together a scene, put that scene on a stage, and then we show the stage. So the reference to our stage dot show. And that is all the main method needs, our main class needs, because we have our main method, which is application.launch, and it's a Java FX application, so we had to override this start method and we create a parent object for that fxml file put that in our scene stick the scene on the stage and show the stage why am i getting a little red dot up there oh it's gone uh, the compiler was just a little bit behind so now we're ready to do stuff here And I suppose a good first thing to do is check all these connections. So I'm going to hit run. 
and hopefully we'll see that open up here in a second. Oh, it's running. Got a warning. There it is. Uh, I'm going to ignore the warning. Um, and there's our basic GUI. So it's all connected. And like I said, pointed out a couple times, we're this is a prototype. We're going to copy and paste it, which means our main won't have to be touched again. And this markup language we're doing from the other software, dragging things around with a mouse. So we can close that. And then all the work gets done here. So we need to make some connections. And we need a couple things. Um, I'm going to duplicate that soft, that thing I did at first and just have a place for the user to enter the name and hit a button. It'll say, hello, uh, user's name. and Or hit the button without entering a name and it'll just say the classic hello world. So we need a couple things. Uh, we'll need a button, uh, a text field, and a label. So we need to set those up in our code. And to do that, we'll use annotations. So here in the controller class, uh, which I just called control, controller might have been a better name. I'm going to add an annotation for FF, FXML. And I want a button. And I'm just going to call it button clicker. Go ahead and initialize that. And we need to do some imports. So clicking here, the Java FX import. And on button, you do want to be careful because uh, we don't want the AWT button. We want a Java FX button. So make sure you import Java FX button. And that's how we'll get all of our components from Scene Builder over to NetBeams by using the FXML annotation, the type of object, and then a reference for it. Uh, so what else is there? There's a uh, at fxml, we'll make a text field. Uh, I'll call that text um, name, because the user's going to enter their name in this case. And at fxml, a label. And I'll just call that label output. And I guess might be important again make sure you're bringing in the Java FX controls not the AWT controls and it's important to do this first because now if we save this and come back over to our scene builder uh, we can add some buttons so we have this set up from the template so under controls over here on the left oh i get that out of the way expand controls oh i didn't give me much room and yeah for some reason i need that to happen when i expand controls oh this one there we go and like always with new software, you're going to want to play around with it and click on different things when you see something like that, like it doesn't expand, the accordion doesn't expand correctly. You may have to just click around and get familiar with it. But right there, the top control is a button. So we'll just drag that over. Whoops. Not collapse that. Grab a button and drag that over there. And once it's in our scene, we can up here under properties, we can change the text on it. Um, I'll just say click me, put some words on there, and uh, the bottom tab here is code, so if we expand that, up at the top is fix ID, and if you're connected to your controller class, that should be a drop down menu, and we can choose the one we set up in our folder. So now those should be linked together. And same thing for a label. Drag that over. Um, looking at the ID, so I'm going to call that, connect that to the output label. And a text field. Should be one here somewhere. There it is. I'll bring in a text field. Um, yeah, I'll put it up here. That'll work. Just a quick example. 
And once again, on the fix ID, connect that to the one we set up in the controller class. Let's see. So under properties again, um, on the text field, we could put regular text or the hint text. Um, enter a name. I'll put that as a hint in the background, just background gray. And on the label, I will take the text out because that's going to be just output stuff. So that should be good here. Hit Control S. So all the save changes saved. Back over here, and everything's connected. Should be running good. We just need something for it to do. And to do that, we'll make a regular Java method. Um, well, it's a graphical user interface, so most of our, almost all our methods are going to be voids or booleans. So I'll do a void, and I'll call it say hi. And if that's clicked, well, we need to check and see if the user entered a name or not, and just output, uh, then send the output. As always with programming, there's lots of ways that we can do this. Um, so what I had in mind is, well, obviously we need to check whether the user entered their name or not. If we look back at that original one in Adam. Uh, so come back over here. So we get the name from the user or not. And if there's a name there, we say hello there to the user. And if not, we say hello world. So we need to grab that. And there's numerous ways we could do it. And off the top of my head, I'm say I'm not sure what uh, what this text box will have if they don't type anything. But no, I want to get the text from it. So you can get the text, and is that going to be an, if they leave it blank? Is it an empty string? Is it null? Um, could run a few checks to figure it out, but my first thought is to maybe grab the length of it, get the length of it, and if that's equal to zero, then that means they didn't type anything. So if the length of whatever is in that text box is zero, there's nothing typed there. Otherwise, there is something typed there. And I'm going to label this closing curly brace so I don't lose track of those. Always a good idea to do that. So if they didn't in, enter anything, well, that means that they didn't give us their name. So we're just going to say the traditional hello world. So LBL output dot set text. And we want to set that text to the value hello world. At least for the quick test run here. But if they did enter something, well, once again, that output label, we're going to set the text on it. And we want to, I don't want the red box, we're going to set the string to a custom message. So maybe why hello there plus whatever name they gave us, user. I haven't created that name yet. I'll come back and do that. Uh, I often jump around in programming. You know, we're not in English. English goes left to right, top to bottom, but we're in Java. So working left to right, top to bottom is probably not the way our mind's putting it together. So I find it's much more productive to jump around a little. I'm going to create a string called user. So if this is not empty, well, then we want to get what that is. Text name dot get text and put it into this string user and then we'll use the that down there hopefully all that makes sense so just checking to see if the length is zero and then we know if they entered a name or not uh, if it's not zero grab that grab the text put it in a string and then throw it in a message but if it is zero just the traditional hello world so it should be able to hit save and run this and I was talking the whole time I was typing, and typos happen when just typing, so it's probably a good chance one happened there, but we'll see in a second. That warning message is still there. All right, so 
Um, looks like the components are there. Okay. The button. Oh, well, we did forget a step, didn't we? Because we wrote the method, but we never connected that to the button. And we can do that really easy over in Scene Builder. If we come back over to Scene Builder, select our button. And down here in the section, it says Code. Now that we have some methods written, one of our options, well, you see all these options. On action, drag selected, on mouse drag. All, all our events are down here is like drop down menus we can choose things for. So I'm going to go with the basic on action, which is a click on a button. And if we check the drop down menu, well, there's that methods created. So as long as all the connections are formed, we should be able to find all our stuff from drop down menus over here. And notice that everything is connected so we no longer have the drop down error. We have to sever a different connection to get that arrow back here. So now that button should be calling the right method when we run it. So I'm going to hit Control S to save that and back over here and give it another test run. So if I just click the button, oh, get hello world. Probably need to get rid of that label. That's not a big deal. Uh, if I enter in my name and hit the button, oh, get the custom message. So it looks like that's working. And that's kind of what I was looking for. This is a prototype. Now we can copy and paste this package, or not package, copy and paste this project to start a new one. Our IDE knows where the libraries we need are. And this project has all the settings to work with it. And our main is set up. We won't need to change that again. And the FXML, we're right click and hit edit if you want to see it here. And our markup language we're handling from the other interface so we can deal with that there. So after copying and pasting the prototype and changing the name, which we can do in the regular just regular old file explorer, then open NetBeans and open that, then hit the open project button or open it and refactor it. There's lots of ways to make a copy, but we'll make a copy of this. Then just open the control project and start adding the methods we want and add in the controls we want over the inter on the interface. Come over to Scene Builder, drag and drop all the stuff, and it makes building a graphical user sort of app based application a whole lot quicker in Java. Um, and it feels a lot more modern uh, for getting started. And we're still learning all the Java syntax the same. It just, we get a nice drag and drop option for building our graphical user interface that way. So I think this probably went a long ways. I'm going to try to make it. I'll probably make it a shorter version of this coming up soon, but hopefully that will get you started. And yeah, it's not that many steps. It stretches out in a video, obviously, but after you do it two or three times, you'll know them. But it's a lot easier just to copy and paste and then drag your mouse around. Do things the easy way.